What's up? What's up, guys? Where's the... All right. So. So, where am I? Here. Some time ago, I did an unboxing video of these goggles, the Fat Shark HDO, and really all I did was pull them out of the box, plug them into HDMI, and kind of look at what does an HD video look like on these. And as expected, the HD video looked fantastic, but yeah, that, that initial video didn't actually include any FPV review. So now that I've had these for a few weeks and have actually been flying with them, I wanted to do a proper long-term use review, but I'm, I'm not actually going to wear them the whole time. So I came from Sky Zone goggles, and I don't want to make this too much about comparing the goggles that I was using to these goggles, but there's going to be some of that in here. Let me start with the good about these goggles. The screens are phenomenal. Best looking image I've ever seen in an FPV goggle. It, I, I, I really like how these look. It's got a really high resolution so the image looks crisp. I was concerned that how good can the image really look. I mean even if you put a really great screen in here you're gonna be limited by the signal, right? But I'm pleasantly surprised that it looks great. I mean, no, it doesn't feel like you're flying an HD image or anything like that. Like, it's still very clear that you're flying an analog, low-definition FPV um, image, but it just, it, it's crisp. You can't see the pixels at all. That's kind of a complaint that I've had about all the fat sharks that I had kind of tried previously in comparison especially to my sky zones is I felt that the the field of view that they used in comparison to the pixel density was such that you could always kind of see the pixels it almost looked like you were looking through a screen door if that makes sense because you could kind of see where the divisions were between the pixels but you don't get any of that with this so it's a really really great image um, they're comfortable. They're more comfortable than the Sky Zones that I've had. Uh, the Sky Zones I had did not have a fan, so I've really enjoyed having a fan. Uh, prevents fogging, keeps your face cool, and that's that's really all these are. <laughs> I guess that's kind of where the, the positives of this end, but that's just kind of a function of Fat Shark's product strategy. All you really get are the screens and they are amazing screens but that's it my sky zone goggles had built-in diversity and a user interface in which you know when you when you press the buttons to change channels and bands you could actually see on the screen of the goggles without taking them off what channel and band you're on um, you could you could do a band scan and actually see the the band of the the 5.8 uh, in the goggles uh, you could easily start and stop recording DVR and could see that you are recording. Like when you hit a button, it would pull up the on-screen display and you could see that it was red and that it was recording. Um, yeah, I could go on and on about the menus that they have in there, but the point is it has a user interface. And I'd always kind of thought the user interface was a little bit clunky. It was hard to remember exactly which button did what and things weren't kind of laid out and organized kind of intuitively the way that I would like it, but now compared to this, oh my gosh, at least there is a user interface. There's, you just get nothing. I mean, again, that's not a complaint about HDO specifically. It's more just a statement that what Fat Shark just gives you is just the screens. Um, the user interface is all about what module you put in the bay. So on one hand, you could say it's advantageous because then module makers um, can can do fancy things with that and they can be the ones to step up and give you user experience through whatever buttons they have in there and um, Yeah, I just I just got to say though I'm not super happy with the module that I have and then people say oh no You should have gotten the forge or no, no, you need to update the firmware. Did you calibrate it or all this stuff and like? Dude, this is the exact reason that I kind of shied away from do my cat this is the, the exact reason that I kind of shied away from, from Fat Shark in the first place is that I just didn't want to fiddle with all this stuff. I loved that my Sky Zones were pull them out of the box, put them on your face, plug them in, and it just works. Everything that you need to fly and have 
a good experience was included in the goggles and now I find myself wanting to change modules or try different things or I've tried calibrating these things a million times and I'm just I'm frustrated guys I'm honestly frustrated I want I guess I guess what I need to to get for these is a is a module that has a better experience and better performance um, you know less susceptible to RF interference and things like that because uh, because the the performance I was getting out of my sky zones was great. I had very little interference. I was able to fly through abandoned buildings. And honestly, I can definitely say now after owning these, something that I've theorized for a long time is that the sky zone receivers are phenomenal and better than the, some of the modules that you can get for these. I'm happier with the reception and the RF performance I was getting out of my built-in sky zone receivers than I am with, with the receiver I put in here. So what I'm waiting for is a great module to put into the HDOs and the Immersion RC Rapid Fire is coming. Uh, I have been messaging uh, the guys at Immersion very frequently asking how much longer, how much longer because um, I really want to get my hands on this thing because from what I understand it about the menus from what I've seen so far it's really nice. They've got a really nice menu structure and they do have on-screen display capabilities, meaning they are going to be able to overlay an interface in the goggles, so you're going to be able to do a lot of the functions without having to take the goggles off, so I'm really, really excited about it. I'm not switching back to my Sky Zones. Even though I'm frustrated with the module, I really like the screens, and I am spoiled by the larger field of view than I had with the Sky Zones. Now, a lot of people were concerned with the field of view with these because Fat Shark previously made a goggle with bigger field of view and people are wondering why doesn't the newest goggle have the biggest field of view? My personal opinion, take it for what it's worth, is I've, I've never liked the massive field of view. It's, it's my opinion, I, maybe some of you guys are laughing because I know a lot of you guys really want the biggest, most immersive thing, but when I'm flying, I don't want to have to move my eyes too much. I want to be able to take in everything kind of at once and I've just found that that helps me flow and get into things better than when I've had a larger one but I guess I've never really had a massive field of view for a long period of time so I could be totally full of it. Maybe the bigger field of view is totally better. The point I'm trying to make is the field of view that's in here and I don't even know what it is. I think it's 30, is it 32 degrees? 37? Whatever it is, it's great. I love it. I, I kind of think it's the best of both worlds. It's not so big that it's overwhelming and that you're going to have to use like an ultra wide angle lens to compensate. Um, and it's not so small that it feels like the screen is too far away. Now that I've flown these for a while, I don't want to go back to the sky zones because the, the field of view in the sky zones that I was using is much smaller and I'm, I'm just spoiled now. So I'm not switching back, but I am frustrated and that has to do more with the module. So I guess I guess if I kind of had to compare everything, um, my Sky Zones, good user experience, no muss, no fuss, pull out of the box, it works, don't fiddle with modules, but kind of a small screen. Let's, let's say, let's mark that at like a C plus, right? Um, now these, awesome screen, awesome image. I'm really frustrated with having to find the right module and this one not working and you know should I switch to another one that's out there or wait for the rapid fire to come out or I maybe this is also a C plus or maybe uh, I'll bump it up to a B minus I'm being hard on the on the ratings here but I'm just saying that so far I don't feel like it's that much better than the sky zone it just has different advantages because the image is better but my user experience is I don't like it now, when the rapid fire comes out, if it delivers what I understand in terms of better than anything before RF performance, um, really well organized and intuitive user interface, it's sounding to me, I'm totally speculative because I don't have the rapid fire module yet, but if it lives up to what I know about it, I'm thinking we're at like an A minus experience, right? It's, it's really good. Um, Again, I'm a harsh critic. I don't know. I don't even know what it would take to really say it's an A plus user uh, experience and performance and all that stuff. So, so I'm being harsh. But I guess what I'd get at is my my speculative rating of having these with the uh, rapid fire module being like an A minus. Well, then you're looking at $500 goggles plus I think it's like $150 for the receiver. So. 
yeah, that's that's everything I have to ramble about these goggles. Um, overall, I would say I am happy with them. Um, I'm just I'm just put off by the user experience. I mean, I just never know when the DVR is recording, and I just have really not been happy with this module. So I've got to get a better module for it. Um, and that's the hard thing about reviewing these goggles is that there's really not much to say about the goggles themselves. It all comes down to the module. All I can say about the goggles is the image is great. Great screens. Just plug in something good. Great screens though. 